wherever you're watching from also thank you so much for subscribing all of you that have subscribed and if you're yet to subscribe please don't forget to do that because we are waiting for you so we can do a Q&A so I'm sure you guys must have heard uh, once again that Nigerian first lady has opened the calabash huh? <laughs> whether you like Aisha Buhari or not I think that she's the only first lady Nigeria has had who publicly speaks out against what's happening in her husband's administration amen somebody <laughs> you have to give that up to her because it takes courage to do something like that so Madam Aisha during a meeting organized to sensitize women as part of the second time inauguration program said that the social investment program the one that they've allegedly spent up to 500 billion naira on was not felt in so many parts of the country especially in northern Nigeria I said further further is she trying to say that the program was a scam the social investment 500 billion naira funds my said didn't get the money but I don't know whether you're set up what you want to Okay, how many of you that are sure that your state did not benefit from it? How many? My state did not benefit from it. Billion, uh, that is like 1.3, actually almost 1.4 billion dollars. Jesus! So, Channel TV interviewed Miss Miriam Wise. When I say Miss, by the way, it's for both Miss and Mrs. It is MS, so please don't write me about that. She's the senior special assistant to the president on social investment. So, listen to what she said. In 2016, we only got 80 billion of the 500 billion appropriated. The second year, we only got 140 billion released. And this year, we've got 252 billion released. Wait, we did not get everything? Okay, two things. First of all, if they're not getting all the money allocated in the budget, where is the rest of the money going to? Secondly, the amount that they said they've received doesn't really match what they've done. I mean, they should have done better with the amount that they've received. I mean, if you've gotten 80 plus 140 plus 252, that is like 472 billion. I know be so since when he became president, we should see more results than we've seen. So that's is 1.3 billion dollars by the way that they've got turned and then the first lady dropped another bomb you know <laughs> revealing the fact that Nigeria has spent 16 million dollars on buying mosquito nets they have spent 16 million dollars on buying mosquito nets i did not get it but maybe some people have got it but I feel that, that's my personal opinion, I feel that $16 million is enough to fumigate mosquitoes in Nigeria. That's my opinion. I don't know. Maybe it could be a little bit higher than that. So I have to agree with this woman. <laughs> I mean, when are we going to work on eradicating malaria instead of spending money on mosquito nets in Nigeria? We do this every year. We've imported millions of mosquito nets in Nigeria. I mean, I don't know if $16 million could fumigate the whole of Nigeria. Probably not. <laughs> but I do know that several countries in the world have now eradicated malaria in their country. You know, malaria used to exist in all countries of the world. Yes. But in the late 1940s, for example, to 1951, America eradicated malaria. We still have mosquitoes in the U.S., okay? We still have mosquitoes, especially in places like Florida and so on. But you don't get malaria when you are bitten by mosquitoes. I've lived in the U.S. for 16 years and I've never had malaria, except when I go home to visit. <laughs> so after America, the whole of Europe started working on getting rid of malaria. And now Europe is also malaria free. The same thing has happened in so many countries. I mean, between the year 2000 and now, at least 12 countries have gotten rid of malaria, including Turkey, Egypt, Iraq, Sri Lanka. Some are still waiting for certification by the World Health Organization. Usually they wait for like three years. And when there is no case of malaria reported in that three years, then they declare that that country is now malaria free. So it takes years to work on this. Sometimes they have a relapse, but eventually a country can be malaria free if they are determined to and if they work on it. Right now, only about 95 countries still have malaria. And 89% of all reported cases are in sub-Saharan Africa. And other cases are in South and Southeast Asia. Keep in mind, more than 200 million people contract malaria every year, and more than 400,000 die from malaria. Nearly 70% of malaria deaths are in children under the age of five. By the way, Nigeria has the world's highest rate of malaria death, yes, with approximately 51 million cases out of the 400 million reported worldwide every year. 51 million cases are reported in Nigeria every year, and of the 400,000 deaths reported worldwide, 
worldwide, 207,000 deaths are reported annually in Nigeria. So one of the major reasons is mosquitoes are now developing resistance to the insecticides that are used to treat mosquito nets and the indoor insecticides that we spray. Some of you, you can testify to this, that sometimes after spraying your room, you know, with insecticides, you go in to sleep and then you still get bit by mosquitoes. So with all this data that I just gave you, the fact that at least 100 countries have now gotten rid of malaria and also the fact that 51 million people still get malaria every year in Nigeria and out of that about 207,000 Nigerians die every year mostly children under the age of five because of malaria I mean with all this data that should be a huge motivation for us to also want to get rid of malaria completely not just invest in mosquito nets because obviously it's not working so I'm not a medical doctor but I've heard that mosquitoes are actually not the ones causing malaria I heard that it's a parasite inside the human body that can be treated so the problem is it can be spread by the female mosquitoes so if a female mosquito bites someone that has malaria parasite in them then the mosquito becomes a carrier of that parasite and when it bites someone else that's how it transmits malaria to another person so when countries get rid of malaria it doesn't mean that they will no longer have mosquitoes we still have mosquitoes in some parts of the US but it's no longer leads to malaria now you may be wondering how others got rid of malaria and the first thing that they did the people that got rid of malaria the first thing they did was to improve infrastructure because you know if we are really serious about ending not just malaria but all kinds of diseases and flood as well we have to take care of our drainages our sewage system in 2016 I did an episode on how America transformed a during the Great Depression. I called it how Nigeria can be great like America. Please watch it if you're yet to. And at that time, I showed you pictures of how the US used to have open sewage system, just like we do in Nigeria. Their gutters were open, okay? <laughs> but that was when they covered them up and introduced like sidewalks, and then they built lots of bridges and roads. So we have to have the right infrastructure in place if we're really serious about getting rid of malaria. Now to digress, uh, take a look at the yearly floods that we have in Nigeria, for example. Uh, it happened again this year and I remember when I posted this video on my Instagram page I said it's the same story every year some people said that well there's flood in the US it's just natural disaster and that I'm just trying to paint Nigeria bad I beg to differ because the same places are getting flooded every single year in Nigeria my problem is we don't do enough to prevent reoccurrence and if we are not preventing reoccurrence we are not taking care of those affected take the great Ohio flood of 1913 as an example it rained heavily for five days in 1913 everywhere was flooded in Dayton, Ohio. 428 people died. Hundreds of others died and thousands were left homeless. The flood hit downtown Dayton and most of the inner city neighborhoods. Houses were lifted from their foundations and many businesses were destroyed. For months, the community cleaned up mountains of mud and debris. Guess what they did after that flood? This was 1913. The people of Ohio came together. They didn't even wait for the federal government to send them money. They came together and decided this must not happen again. They contributed money among themselves. Brady Kress of Dayton History says the community raised $2 million locally to study the flood problem and fix it. They weren't waiting for the, for the federal taxpayer to pay the bill for the system. They, they said, well, how are we going to handle this? And they did. And later on, the federal government also released funds to ensure that that never happens again. They built a series of dams and levees in what was one of the biggest public projects of its time anywhere in the nation. The dams are built to hold back as much water as needed and let the rest pass through. Um, so the, the river channels downstream can pass that water. Also, Ohio installed a stream gauge network to monitor water level and flow of their rivers and streams. And this is so that they can know ahead of time if the water level is rising. They used to have four stream gauging stations before the flood. They increased it to 160, from 4 to 160. Now, this gives them adequate data for emergency management. They are also able to flood control dams and levees, and they are able to issue warnings ahead of time for people. It was designed to hold back another flood as big as the one in 1913, plus 40% more water. 
making the city safe for development once again and allowing it to become a major industrial center. It's virtually impossible that we could see a repeat of the 1913 flood. In fact, the whole country at that time decided to put in place a comprehensive flood prevention mechanism for flood prone areas and they released funding for flood control projects that would limit damage and save lives. So since that time in America, no flood, no single flood has killed up to 428 people. And I'm not talking about hurricane or earthquake, I'm talking about flood. In fact, all the floods that happen in America in different states every year, when you add all the death tolls together in different states, it still doesn't add up to 428. That was the last time that many people died. It's been in use now for about 91 years, since 1922. Um, it's been extremely effective. It's not as if we also don't know about things like this or that they don't put things like this in place in Nigeria. It's just that sometimes the people in charge of projects like this, they eat up the money. So this is a recent graph of flood death tolls in America. Take a good look at that. You will see the numbers. And you know, it's also not uncommon to see structures like this in different cities or towns in America, in Canada, in Australia, in different parts of the world. They call them flood control channels. So it's not uncommon to see something like this. Uh, sometimes they could be miles long. They built like 29 miles of this in Ohio after that flood. The sole purpose is if it floods, the excess water will end up there and flow into the river. So I'm not in any way saying that America is the best country in the world. I'm not trying to compare Nigeria with America. I'm just saying that I don't think we should cause something a natural disaster when we know that it happens every year and we're not doing enough to prevent reoccurrence. And if we decide that it's natural disaster, at least we know that it will happen. It will happen again next year. So we should have ambulances ready. We should have hospitals ready and want people ahead of time to relocate and provide shelters for thousands of those that are displaced. We should also have those trucks that siphon water when there is flood. That would reduce the number of people dying every year. Now back to getting rid of malaria before I digress. You know all this falls under developing our infrastructure by the way and um, our drainage system, building more bridges, constructing more dams, building more roads. That's the first step to take. Now to get rid of malaria is not just limited to developing our infrastructure. It's it is something that we have to attack from all angles. You know, we have to remove or drain mosquito breeding sites and we have to spray potential breeding sites and homes with insecticides. And also we need to install screens on windows and doors across all homes, you know, while we're doing that. We also need to equip our hospitals so that they are ready to treat anyone that has malaria while they're getting rid of the carrier mosquitoes. Now this means that we need to build more hospitals. There are so many local governments in Nigeria till today that don't have any hospitals. Not to talk about many towns and villages that have no hospitals and you know the ones that we have must also be well equipped with adequate medication uh, injection and stuff like that you know keep in mind that the adult female mosquitoes lifespan is between 42 to 56 days you can google that you can check it so if we can spray mosquito prone areas while treating those with malaria within two months and they are not exposed to uh, mosquito all the malaria carrying mosquitoes will actually die within 52 days and if this is too complicated for us right now. I believe that they're now working on the malaria vaccine. So many organizations like the Bill Gates Foundation, they are working on getting rid of malaria in Africa. So while mosquito net is good, I think it's time for Nigeria to start working towards getting rid of malaria completely. And will not only save money in the long run, you know, from treating people, but will also save more than 200,000 lives every single year. So I think it's worth it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, because you guys I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just giving it a roll. So moving on to Ghana, I'm sure that you guys have seen pictures and videos of how the newly constructed Terminal 3 at uh, Kotoka International Airport was flooded. So it's the same airport terminal that I featured on this show last year that is really nice and newly constructed. Anyway, so it's rainy season right now in Ghana and the airport was flooded. So I've seen all kinds of comments online. You know, first of all, uh, I think people need to know that it's not just the airport that was flooded. In fact, so many places have had been flooded for weeks. Remember when the cathedral in France got burnt? One of the reasons why Ghanaians were really upset with their president was because seven people had just been killed by flood in Ghana and he didn't say anything about it, but he was quick to send condolences to Paris, you know? So it's not just the airports that was flooded. I've been talking about floods in Ghana as well on this show for years, just like I've been talking about floods in Nigeria. In fact, I remember in 2015, after a major flood in Ghana, a lot of people took 
took shelter at a gas station, not realizing that fuel had leaked and mixed with water. And of course, the gas station exploded in the middle of the night, killing 150 people. Was there a flood the year after that? Of course. And did people die? Of course. And the year after, of course, and the year after that, of, and this year, of course. My question is, since we know that we have rainy season every year, this is not just peculiar to Ghana, um, would you say that the government of your country is doing enough to prevent reoccurrence, to limit the effect of the flood, or are they even preparing for the worst? You know, I've heard a lot of Ghanaians complaining that their drainage system is very poor and that many of their gutters are stuffed with trash. So when it rains, it floods. We have the same issue in Nigeria as well. Whether we like it or not, by the way, there will be another rainy season coming up about this time next year. How prepared are we? So would you say that your government is ready? In 2016, I talked about how deforestation is affecting us big time in Africa. Um, you know, a major way of preventing floods is by planting trees. I explained in that video how trees prevent flooding. It takes years for trees to grow, but they have to be planted. Honestly, that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Australia when I was in Australia there are trees everywhere please watch that video uh, if you're yet to when I talk about deforestation in Africa so let me know what you guys think uh, about whether this was a natural disaster or not or if it could have been prevented or minimized you guys not know much guess what I'm just keeping it around <laughs>